everyone. So I'm going to be um, going over linear interpolation and how this works in processing. Um, this may sound like it's a more complicated thing than you might think, but in reality, processing, like a lot of other things in it, it may, they make it very easy to, do, to use. So the reason I'm showing you this example is because a lot is because of the fluid kind of organic nature that you're seeing in this is attributed to the linear interpolation function in processing. So before we get started, let's just go to the website and look at what that looks like. So we're going to close this. Oopsies. Minimize this. Uh, minimize this guy. And I have it opened up over here. So this is the linear interpolation. It's called LERP. It's a kind of funny name considering um, it's kind of, an, well I guess if they called it linear interpolation it'd be intimidating, but that's for a different conversation. So calculate the number between two numbers at a specific increment. The amount parameter is, is an amount to interpolate between the two values where zero equals where zero equal to the first point. Point one is very near the first point. Point five is halfway, etc. The LERP function is convenient in creating motion along a straight path and for drawing dotted lines. So these are the examples up here. We're not going to copy this in, but I'll show you guys how I use it. Um, but really, though, the syntax, this is all we really care about. Um, and you have to make sure you use floats for this. Um, that's pretty key. So we're going to copy this guy to use this later. Go away, Google Chrome. Um, and we'll save this up here for good keeping. There we go. So this is going to be our workspace. Right now, we just have a black rectangle. So let's draw some things. So first of all, let's make it so we have no stroke. I'm not a big fan of the strokes. Um, I like the band. Um, but anywho, um, we're going to use blend mode for this. This is something I learned for last week. Um, if you're using different colors, instead of them um, overlapping, they're going to blend. And you'll see uh, that can create some really cool effects. And let's just make an ellipse. So I'll make an ellipse. Um, we're going to make it from mouse X, mouse Y. Let's make it 100 and 100. Um, and we also need to have this have a fill color, so we're going to make it red. All right, and then let's see what this looks like. We should have a dot that follows a mouse. I think this was lecture one, pretty much. So let's make this a little bit more interesting, and let's use the let's try to incorporate the linear interpolation function. So we're going to close that guy, come over here. So instead of having mouse x and mouse y here, we're going to have a variable for them. So let's do let's go over here. Let's say um, float um, new x equals zero, float new y is equal to zero. And then we're going to use the void mouse click function to set these based on uh, where you click the mouse. So every time the mouse clicks, we're going to say new x is equal to mouse x, and we're going to say new y is equal to mouse y. There we go. And then now, down here, instead of having, since we're using a variable, we can now use new y, new x, sorry, and then new y. And they should be set to zero. So we should see the dot start up in the top left corner. And let's click. And there we go. So this looks pretty straightforward. I hope you can all follow this much. Um, so now let's make it so that instead of going right to the mouse, let's see what linear interpolation does. So we're going to set another variable up here. Um, you'll see why we're going to use this in a second. So we'll call this float origin x. Um, let's call it 1 because well, it's a surprise, but you'll see you might have some more later. Flow origin uh, y1 equals 0. OK. And so now what we're going to do here is we're going to use a linear interpolation fun uh, function within the draw function. So after this all happens, we're going to say um, origin x is equal to linear interpolation. So we're going to start at where the origin is, so origin x, 1, I almost forgot that. It's going to stop at where the new x is, because that's where the mouse is telling it to go. And then the amount, at this point, let's just pick a number. Um, so in the documentation, they said that the smaller the number is, the slower it will go, and the fastest, um, the higher the number is up to 1, is it'll go immediately. So let's just do 0.25 for now. All right. And then I'm just going to copy this to expedite the process. So pretty much we name all the variables the same just between x and y. You should try not to copy code normally, though. 
And now instead of here, we're going to do origin. Oops, I don't know what just happened there. So here, we're going to go and copy uh, origin x, origin x1, sorry, and then origin y1. Let's see what this looks like. So let's click, and there we go. So that movement is attributed to the linear interpolation function. And let's just try to mess with these values a little bit so you can see that more in effect. So we're going to make these values even less. Let's rerun it. Let's click, and there you go. Now it's a very lethargic red circle. So um, let's add some more circles so you can really see how this is happening. So what's happening? And you can see the differences in the different um, in the different cert in the different um, speeds. So I'm just going to make this a little bit cleaner because we're going to be copying code again. Um, so right now we have origin x1, origin y1. So we're going to just copy this. We're going to make it so one circle is red. So this is the top one is red. This next one we'll just go th through the color wheel, and then we'll make this next one will be green, and this one will be blue. So now we should have three circles, but still all the variables have to be changed. So now let's just copy these guys. We're going to make this two, two, three, and three. And then you guys will bear with me for a moment as I copy and paste code again. Or rather fix my copy and pasted code. See, it's bad to copy and paste code because if I forget to change one of these, then we'll have some wonky results and you don't really know why. Okay, so hopefully this will work. So. Um, right now, we'll have three circles, one that's red, one that's green, one that's blue. And you saw me changing these, the amount value in the linear interpolation, this guy right here, earlier. So let's change that um, a little bit more. Um, let's make this guy like 15. Um, and because new x and new y is never being manipulated, that's why you can see us using the same variable in all three of these functions. So all I did now is copy the same red circle. I made a green one and I made a blue one. And I just changed this linear interpolation factor. So let's see what we have. So we have a white circle in the corner. And let's click in the bottom right. And as you can see, the circles follow suit. And it's actually white when they all overlap. And that's because of the color blend mode. Or the, the blend mode is um, additive. So it adds RGB, 255, 255. Uh, 255, and it makes um, one just white circle. There we go. I'm going to always click around. And what we can actually do, um, even though I made this function before, we can just make it follow the mouse now. I'm copying and pasting code again. And there you go. So now we have three circles that just kind of follow the mouse around. The red one's always a lethargic one. So as you can see, um, let's bring this all back to the original example I showed. Um, and let's see how this can actually be put into effect for some of the assignments. So I'm going to close this. Um, I'm going to open this code up so if you missed anything, you can look at it again. It's just we have some variables up here. These are being set by the mouse clicked. Um, blend mode is giving us that really cool color effect, uh, additive effect rather, and three circles. All right, so we're going to minimize this guy. Let's go back to our example. Um, it's right here, sorry. So in the example, um, this is actually my, my code from the last assignment, which you actually saw at the start of this video. Um, so this is, all this is happening within a for loop. And um, we're tapping into the, um, I think it's called a minim library. Yeah, minim library to get the different frequencies for voice. So. As you can imagine, with voice, um, you have a lot of frequencies that are spiking up and then going back to zero. So with linear interpolation, we can make it look very pretty. So let's see what it looks like with, without linear interpolation first. I'm just uncommenting this line, commenting, and then uncommenting this line, commenting this one out. And let's see what this looks like. So this one's a little crazy. <laughs> um, it's uh, very jarring, and that's because there's no linear interpolation. And every time we talk, um, you can see it goes from zero to maximum value in an instant. So 
let's go like this and let's bring the linear interpolation back. Um, and all this is here again is the start is the last value. The current value is the this is the minimum libraries. We're getting the func we're getting the amplitude or sorry we're getting the frequencies um, value and we're just multiplying it by a constant. And then we're gonna make it go at 0.1. And let's see what this looks like. So this is all the same code except now we added linear interpolation. And just this one small addition can really change um, the final outcome of the code um, in a very pleasing way. Uh, and we can play with this value a little bit more. I don't want to be a dead horse. Um, I think this is where we started at. This is maybe a little too slow. Ah, it looks good. Um, and then if we go back to one, this is what the documentation was saying. This should look the same as no linear interpolation because it's just going from the start to the end um, in the same draw um, cycle. And let's go like 0.5 just to really hit it home. And there we go. This is still a little jarring, and that's because it's going so fast, but uh, you can still see a little bit, it's acting a little bit slower. So really just fiddle around with these numbers and you'll get some really cool results. Um, I think that is all. I hope you learned a lot. Um, if you have any questions, you know where I sit. Um, thank you very much.